I think you, you have a tendency to want so badly to hide who you are that there, there is a parallel universe going on. You, you, you want so badly for people to know who you are, but you hide it. And then finally you can't hide it anymore. And that's basically what this, this whole thing is about, I think. 16th of January. Last Tuesday night, I came in the, to the den to watch TV, stretched the chair out, and touched the wall very softly. Richard looked over at me, as he always does when he hears the tap on the wall. I then got up and pulled the chair out again and stretched out again. I don't know what happened, but I couldn't take it anymore, so I went into the living room and sat down. He yelled, come back in here and sit down. I told him I was going to sit in there and read. That's when Richard blew his top. He picked up a box of garbage bags and hit himself in the front of his head and the black bags fell all over the kitchen. Then he started beating himself with his fist on his head and beat his head on the door jamb, screaming and running back and forth from the front to the back room screaming. He then went in the den and took the chair and threw it in the backyard. He came back in and fell on the living room floor screaming. I told him that I was going to call 911. I was scared to death. I also told him just a tap on the wall didn't warrant putting a $600 chair outside. He got off the floor when I told him I was going to call 911 and started whistling. I was sitting in the living room and was stunned. Don't know when he went out and brought the chair in again. He kept hassling me in the kitchen and there are a set of knives there. I took one out and told him to leave me alone. He started screaming again to put the knife back which I did. I wanted to call Robert, but knew he wouldn't let me. I could not sleep that night. Stayed up the rest of the night. He went to sleep in our bed. About four in the morning, I tried sleeping in the other room. I don't know what is happening to Richard. He thought I did that on purpose every time I sat down in that chair. I always pull it out because I know how hard he has worked to make the room presentable. Why would I do that? The strange part of all this is he just forgets about his actions and goes about his everyday routine after his outburst. We did talk and he said he would leave and I could have the house and either car I wanted and would see that I had enough to get by on and that he would leave the next day. Two weeks later he went to Odem to Green's Plymouth dealer and bought a new car. When I came back from my sewing group Thursday he was sitting at the table when I came in, said, I bought you a new car. It's at home now. I drove it to church Sunday. It's very easy to drive. Now is the outburst and scaring me half to death something I'm going to have to live with from now on? I am really afraid of having a heart attack or another stroke. My heart is booming and I can't move. It is really scary. About 10 years ago, my mother passed away, and we had to go through a lot of um, drawers. And in the process of that, we found a series of letters that my mom had kept as a journal. They were all sealed. They weren't addressed to any individual person. What we found out was that um, my parents had a much more of a volatile relationship than what we had experienced. I took several, because my dad was still alive, and I took ones that I felt that might disturb my dad. These letters were her viewpoint of how she saw things. And my dad may have a totally different perspective on how things were panned out. One thing about my mom is that's where I did inherit the bipolar side. Her whole family was bipolar, and my mom, was always very depressed, a very depressed person. And she would come in to the show and be in complete denial that this was even about her. So 
generally all my all my work is very very much based on personal stories of gro either growing up of the life I have right now sometimes those stories mix there's a um, a multi layering and I think that's what my mind does my my mind as a bipolar person has that multi layering of um, it, it, it doesn't know how to separate one thing from the other. And so this entire wall has just multi-layering of stuff. It starts with almost the perfect marriage, the, the chandelier, the, the wedding dress, and it's almost just kind of a, the, almost a cycle. The whole thing circles around. What I remember about growing up with my dad was fishing. And so I've got the fish flowing through. There's a cycle. There's still his side of the story. I, I wanted the fish to still be flowing through because I'm sure even in the meantime, we were fishing and um, he was throwing chairs in the backyard. I was just unaware that that was happening. So the tumble chair is strictly out of the letter. The letter that my mom wrote talks about her tapping, sitting in a chair to watch TV, leaning back and tapping the back of, of a wall. It makes my dad mad. And so she leaves the room and goes to another room to read. And in the process, it makes, that's made him so mad that he throws that chair in the backyard. Inside these drawers, I've put words, and people can pull those words out and actually attach them to the walls. They can actually recreate their own, it's like a puzzle, they can re recreate their own letter. And the, the lines, it's like notebook paper. If, if you're keeping a journal, it's what you would write, how you would write it. 16th of January. Last Tuesday night, I came in the, to the den to watch TV. There's a tape that runs constantly. You're hearing this tape that's saying, saying, or repeating what the, le the letter is saying. The lamp actually has the writing. If people were interested enough, they could find out what the letter says just by reading what's on the lamp. I wanted the dresser to still have that, a little bit of a purity, an openness with these two naked and free characters, but at the same time, they're hidden. They're hiding from each other on each side of this dresser. And you kind of wonder what ha what's happened over the years, you know, over 40 years, what, what's gone on over that time. What's really been the most important to this, um, for this show, is when I think about what I pass on to my kids. And I've inherited depression and bipolar from my parents. And where, that, where is that going to go? with my kids. Maybe it may be nothing will ever happen with it. it Maybe they will totally live their life um, depression free and um, it would be a nice thing. But um, that's probably affected me the most um, thinking about that.